You feel that, everybody? Oh, damn. It's the feeling of Tuesday. On a Wednesday? On a Wednesday. <laughs> well, now I've seen everything, haven't I? <laughs> well, hello, you beautiful bastards. It's good to see you again for Jazz Night. It's hey. been a hot minute since me and Bryce Neshcom Castillo That's joined right. you here at the Ivory Cat Saloon. <laughs> How you guys doing? It's Ladies Night. So if you're a lady, congratulations. You're, you're also a, a knight. Oh, ah. That's right. Go ahead. Get on one knee. Ladies of the night, you could say. <laughs> you're a uh, member of the Order of the British Empire. Congratulations, ladies. You have equal rights as a knight. Uh, uh. What? What? What's got us in a jazzy hey. mood? Uh, it's just on the rotation of the jazz pre-show or uh, yeah, pre-show music. I'm going to say something like I know it's a fact, and then you can check that fact. It's a little segment I call fact checking. All right. Jazz is, was synonymous with jizz. The uh, the genre, the Star Wars genre. Well, actually, uh, okay, so separate thing in the extended universe they called the style of music that the um, uh, the cantina, cantina folk played. Uh, also, that's their word. Uh, the, cantina? They, call, they called it uh, uh, cantina folk. Oh. Uh, oh, those are baths. They call that jizz whaling is what they called it. Jizz, mm-hmm. The jizz whaler. That's why I said it. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But jizz I believe, whaling is very funny too. But I believe that like a harpoon jazz, taking a big harpoon, and then the other person is like taking putting their pants down. Well, so here's what I think. I, I, if I remember correctly, and we could check my facts because that's the name of the segment. Oh, right. That's right. Um, I believe jazz as a general kind of, I don't want to say quite pejorative, but just dismissive, like it's jizz, you know? Uh Uh-huh. Similar to scat. When you go, Right. Scat when you're scatting. Shit. Sure. Scat is shit. Jazz is jizz. I'm almost... I'm, I'm, what am I even fact checking here? That those words what, what, sound. What, whether I'm right, I, I believe the origins of those words were jazz was meant like jizz, and scat was meant like shit. I see. Um, well, we can go to the uh, origins. I guess, I guess we, we're the looking at the origins of the word jazz. At the etymology of the word jazz. Uh, first attested. This is jazz. First attested around 1912 in a discussion around baseball. Attested in reference to music around 1915. Numerous references suggested that this term may be connected to jazzum and jism. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna call that one for one. Jazzum, uh, zest for an accomplishment or drive. Uh, and jism uh, first attested with the meaning of energy and then the meaning of semen in 1888. First semantic development compare, spunk, which I don't think I will do at this time. Uh, yeah. Okay. That kid's got spunk. And of course, that's ironic because if he's a kid, he doesn't have spunk. <laughs> right. He's got dry spunk right now. He'll he's get the real stuff got, soon. He's, he's prepped. He's, he's spunk ready? Nope. Nope. Never mind. Nope. <laughs> Undo that word I just yeah. said. <laughs> All right. What about, what about scat? Scat's definitely shit. Right? Oh. It was uh, jazz I was less sure of. Let's check. Scat with a K first, because I think we normally get. <laughs> That's MC Scat Cat. That's our friend Romney Malco, <laughs> rapping with Paula Abdul. <laughs> uh, a trick-taking card game for three players in Germany, or a widow of two cards in a game of Scat. Okay, so Scat with a K is a card game. Now let's look Scat with a C. More like card lane. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, from Middle English, Scat Shat. From Old English, shiat, property, goods, owndom, wealth, treasure, payment. Old Norse, scatter, wealth, treasure, tax. Proto-Indo-European, scotten and scot, to jump, skip, or splash out. The Dutch, shot, for treasure hoard, darling. Uh, Latin, scatio, gush, team, bubble forth, or bound. Alternately, S-C-A-T-T and S-K-A-T-T. A tax or tribute, uh, a land tax paid in the Shetland Islands. Uh, etymology two animal excrement droppings dung heroin whiskey sure um, origin unknown suggests from the ancient Greek score um, okay uh, oh um, here etymology three is scat singing okay so scat singing let's 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 go down that rabbit rabbit hole um, okay 
Uh, it's just jazz singing. The act of vocalizing. Yeah. Beedy bobby boo 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 doo. There's no uh, etymological uh, trail to to follow whether or not it's directly associated with poop or or. Uh, no, the like etymology that for that type of scat is probably imitative. So, uh, meaning oh, they hear people true. say like, scat. Give me that scat, scoot, scoot, scoot. Yeah. Right. 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 Okay. Separate thing. While we're on the subject of scat. Okay. Did you know? Did you know? Did you know that Jack Black said the words scat cat? No. What? Lick a titty while scatting for the Teen Choice Music Awards on Nickelodeon. No. You ask if I knew that. Like, I would have he, seen said, it. he said in the. So, so. Uh, this is sort of a, remember we talked about the Lady Gaga thing where she confirmed that uh, that half the time she's saying fa 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 fuck her face. I, I yes I yeah I remember that. Okay, I don't know that I believe it. Wait, even though she said it? Yes. Oh, I guess yeah. I guess if you're Lady Gaga, <laughs> it's better to just act like you did a thing. Right. <laughs> also, uh, there's that wh whatever that cognitive illusion is where it's like you know if you. You, you see bubba or fa fa, you know, you oh, sure, you base what you hear on what you see. Um, if you look up, maybe you, you could just play the audio if we're worried about copyright stuff. But okay. Jack Black, Nickelodeon, Teen Choice, and you'll hear sort of a looping thing where he builds on everything, and in the middle of it, like uh, uh the Reddit thread, somebody was was like, finally, yes. It's like, uh, I argued with all my friends for years, and nobody believed me that he says, lick a titty. <laughs> then apparently, if I remember correctly, he uh, he confirmed it. Let's see, from a commercial, okay. It yeah. Seems this is a commercial <laughs> for uh, the 2006 Kids' Choice Awards. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I heard it there. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Nick, 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 Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's it's one of the more like if 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 it would be one thing if like the Lady Gaga thing, the the way you get to that point, if in the truest version of that story is intentionally right. You're like, oh, I'm gonna say fuck, and we're gonna process it and make it sound like anyway, poke. Got him. Where this is like. Scat music, that could have, like, it, there's a 50-50 chance that it was just like, that's just also kind of... Oh, if I was going to guess... Not deliberate, I guess. I'm going to... Uh, yes. Uh, I, I, I'm going to guess they did multiple takes of all that, and it was all put together in post, and that happened to be the best one, yeah. and it happened to have him say lick a titty in it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, like, maybe when they finished with it, he was like... Yeah, I think during one of those I said lick a titty. I wonder what'll happen. And then you does not think, think about it again. And then later you look at it and you're like, oh, that's the one where I said lick a titty. Well, it's out. And then you don't say anything. And then years later you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, I definitely said lick a titty. <laughs> okay, yeah. What, what brought this up? Um, none of that because the gift okay. I have for you okay. is in Another your email gift. box. Okay. I want you to read it and. Okay. Tell me, tell me <laughs> whatever you think of it. Uh, so, so uh, backstory on this, backstory on this. Um, uh, I dig me the Google News algorithm uh -huh. because it go, it brings me stuff that I would not normally find on my own. That's how I find a lot of sites. Uh, Google News algorithm also sort of, you know, figures out what you seem to like. So uh, uh, Rick and Morty News pops up. And, uh, and so I see this headline and okay. then I click on it and I read this article. Uh, this is an article from the Digital Weekly. Mm -hmm. The headline is, Here's the reason why the rest of the series has been delayed for Rick and Morty Season 4, Episode 6. Keep going. Now, can I... I'll keep reading this to entertain the bit, but I want to put a stake in the ground that says I think I know. 
uh, maybe what the punchline is here. So okay, release date the the H two release date of season four episode five, and then we got body text. Rick and Morty is ready to return to complete season four stage six the fourth segment, <laughs> but there is an application. This adult <laughs> swimming energy has been decomposing in recent weeks. In any case, it is still unknown when he will return. <laughs> Keep going! <laughs> Not exactly what I thought this would be, <laughs> but close. Undoubtedly, this will end in a few minutes because in the middle of the previous period, the study detailed that Rick and Morty's fourth season will return this year. Anyway, the scene has been downloaded since five, starting a month now. <laughs> and H2, Rick and Morty season four plot. Uh, body. Rick and Morty cannot return to the season four calendar of scene six as imagined, and Voice Entertainment for Summer Smith suggests this. Spencer Grammer revealed during his meeting with Collider his, during his meeting <laughs> that fans may need to endure more time, although he did. They are reopening a couple of segments that must be filled. The most specific moment is that the show will return in February. <laughs> I think he has made sure that he is oblivious to the idea that the hole between seasons three and four will be the longest. And the last time he surrounds that, it is crazy. <laughs> Viewers of the show revealed Entertainment Weekly. I didn't think how fast we could do it. Be that as it may, I understand that it will never happen again. Uh, another subheading, Rick and Morty Season 4, colon, Mystery of the Show. <laughs> In any case, engaged fans will crush to discover that they have not received progressively new parts to accept since 2020 began. <laughs> Fortunately, it does not seem that they should remain absurdly long for Scene 6. Pringles ev Elevation Mystery with Rick and Morty's theme appeared on YouTube, proving that fans would have the option of seeing everything during a critical occasion. While he did not make quick reference to the date of attendance of the movement, all indications that it is possible is that they could use this massive platform for advertising. <laughs> the most important thing is for those who closed. However, after the fourth season, Rick and Morty fans can breathe effortlessly, resulting in another 60 new payments. <laughs> Aman Tawari, an ambitious teen on his way to analyze and explore the depths of journalism and content writing. Writing has always dynamized his inner voice, currently grasping a fascinating experience at the Digital Week Weekly. Ping me, and then no. There's no link. <laughs> oh, <and> uh, no. <laughs> so so I, I. So there's a lot of this that goes on in, in content mills because people Google Rick, when is Rick and Morty coming back? Correct. Rick and Morty season four episode five episode six whatever but then so yeah like dead for me says this also has the telltale signs of being a translation yes well especially uh, with because i see it a lot in in like japanese where they it won't bring over misses or miss because they don't use gendered uh, they don't always use gendered um uh name titles titles right um, uh, well, I'll tell you about. Let's let's test your theory. There's an article on Guardians of the Galaxy here. I'll I'll, I'll just uh, okay. let's let's take a look. <clears throat> when will Guardians of the Galaxy three releasing, and what will be the storyline? Oh, I would love to know when when <laughs> will be releasing. When will Guardians of the Galaxy three releasing, and what will be the storyline? It would be surprising for Marvel Cinematic Universe fans to hear Guardian of the Galaxy Volume 3 would be their way to the end. Genuinely retro soundtrack and everything. Given the large <laughs> number of movies and television programs that preceded the Volume 3, things will undoubtedly change even more before fans can once again see their favorite a-hole scene on the big screen. <laughs> So, dude, oh my god, I want that on a business card. It just says Brian Brushwood, a whole scene on the big screen. <laughs> <laughs> Available for blockbusters everywhere. <laughs> Although the concrete details are a bit scary right now, Marvel's super space fighting team still has a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot to offer. I love the fact that for the third time the headline reads, What's the release date for Guardians of the Galaxy 3? <laughs> Thanks to Gunn's contractual obligations to Warner Brothers and DC production delays effectively forced the Galaxy Volume Guards <laughs> stages 4 of 2 3 of the MCU as revealed <laughs> as revealed by Kevin Feige's San Diego Comic-Con 2019 list for the 2020-2021 study Initial speculation by fans has mm -hmm. suggested that in 2020 or 2021, <laughs> the film will be a hit in theaters. Oh, a hit! A space of three to four years Here between the second one. and third films of the franchise. <laughs> 
Now, for some reason, it switches fonts. <laughs> <laughs> Gun script was ready before filming. Uh, <laughs> and Marvel intended to use it no matter who directed it. Entirely different voice. Would not be surprised if I Googled that and it was directly ripped off from, like, Hollywood Reporter. <laughs> but the tumultuous pre-production phase did. The window was not surprised. <laughs> Feige <laughs> confirmed the volume. Three of our arrives during its presentation of Comic-Con, but has no more information. No new updates were released from the <laughs> Disney D23 Expo, which announced Black Panther 2 for Guardians of the Galaxy Pal launch phase 5. <laughs> <laughs> D Oh, is there more? May 2022. <laughs> Full sentence. <laughs> Three can be released in 2022 or 2023. But for now, everything is speculation. Who are all being reunited for its casts? Although Gamora was cut off a cliff and... <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, also, Gamora is not spelled like the name. It's spelled like the biblical city. <laughs> Although Gamora was cut off a cliff and in Infinity War, most of the other Guardians, quote, broke free. Marvel has found a way to take them back to Volume 3, so we can expect the main cast, Chris Pratt, Star-Lord, Bradley Cooper, Rocket, Karen huh? Gillian, Nebula, Zoe Saldana, Gomorrah spelled right now, <laughs> Dave, Bautista, <laughs> Dave Bautista, Drakes. <laughs> D-R-A-K-E-S. <laughs> Drakes, Vin Diesel, Groot, Sean Gunn, Craglin, and... Craglin? Oh. Okay. I got to make sure I'm reading this right. Sean It Gunn? looks like Porn Clementif. Uh, or maybe it's Palm Clementif. Is that the real name? Palm Clementif? Yes. Who? P-O-M. Or my eyes are old and it's P-O-R-N. Oh, uh, here we go. Palm Clementif. She, oh, she was in Uncut Gems? Looks like maybe. French oh, that's actress. interesting. Uh, so, so it's spelled with a C in this article. Like Bob Clementine, Clementine, like a like a fruit. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Aker is back, especially now that Gunn has re has returned to the position of director. Last headline: What would the storyline this time for the same? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably all over by the time Avengers 4 ends in 2019 but Gunn mocks that some seismic changes will begin in the Marvel Cinematic Universe meanwhile a newly released scene from Avengers Infinity War can provide insight into the upcoming Guardian of the Galaxy movie oh. originally shown to fans at Comic Con in San Diego The View receives a series of important coded message <laughs> messages for parents but they are missing both Star Lord and Drax discuss the music, seeing the flashing light before Mantis Mentis's intervention. Oh my God, this site! I, I think I, I'm now back to your side. I think it, it's yeah. it's all translated. It's all poorly I, I, translated. I think it's a <clears throat> mixture of that. But but the other thing is, um, you know, the whole thing like when you go to search for a recipe and you click anyone, it's like a whole essay before it'll even get to the recipe. Right. That is. Uh, what I've learned in the past like month or two is an anti Google tactic to make Google rank those recipes because uh, uh, there, there's, there's weird juice in how Google's search stuff works, but it also, it takes into account like a it's called jazz. <laughs> yeah. Some of the jazz, <laughs> some of the, some of the <laughs> arithmetic <weird> jazz. Juice. <laughs> the weird juice goes bebop. <laughs> Among <laughs> the urban musicians. Well, I'm not going to quite. All right. And uh, so part of it is like original content. having Because if everyone just had their recipe, then sites would start to look the same. And right. so part of what Google looks for and why they do that is for original <laughs> content and looking unique compared to, say, other similar. So weirdly, goals. even if you know that first paragraph is garbage, it's worth it to put it in there so that it tricks the algorithm into thinking this is the original thing and everyone else is pretty much just quoting it uh, I, I don't i guess i don't mean original as like the first but unique content i guess yeah um oh which is gosh. super weird 
Sorry, I just saw this very relevant article to me. Here's everything you need to know about Lock and Key Season 2. Oh, okay, yes. Be alert with the keys that you find in the key house. <laughs> the Lock family has now precisely moved in, and oh. things aren't what they seem in their new home. Precisely. Gratitude to all the mysteries that are hidden within its walls. As Kinsey, Bodie, and Tyler remain to find the keys and the special power that they each hold, they soon figure out that not everything is as it appears. But with an evil villain out to get the keys for her hidden plan, things aren't working to be comfortable for them. <laughs> uh, so, like, I'm looking at other stuff. So some of this is just, like, written very al algorithmically, like, even these news bits. Yeah. Like, the, uh, Wonder Woman, who is the mysterious villain Cheetah? Uh, one hundred eighty four is releasing this year, directed by Patty Jenkins. Like, like we're just like data as news because they just want people to look up Wonder Woman cheetah villain, uh, and it has all these hot keywords in it. Yeah, weird stuff. Content mills people. Oof. The player R. Keanu Reeves, who plays the role as T Theodore Ted Logan. <laughs> It's, yeah. They even got that backwards. <laughs> Alex Winter, who plays the role as William. William Sadler, <laughs> who plays the role as Grim Reaper. Bridget Lundy Payne as the role as Billy Logan, Ted, and Elizabeth's daughter. <laughs> mm. uh, oh, I know what you're doing. Uh, okay. I was like, wait, is this the lock and key? No. No, no, no. no this no. is the new Bill and Ted. Yeah. Huh. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Okay. Um, <clears throat> do you want to hear? I won't say what it is, but here's every possibilities and interesting things explained. Okay. And we do have one Justin Robert Young on the line okay. audio. Yeah. Hey, Justin. What up? I uh, got an article for you. I'm going to read the article. Go. Um, Go. I'm going to leave out any names of characters, and it's on you uh, or the name of the show. It's on you to tell me what this article is about and this is on sure uh, i will tell you this much it's on a, a major news site and this was okay. written by aman tawari um who <clears throat> great guy great guy uh yes if, if you're unfamiliar aman tawari is an ambitious teen on his way to analyze and explore the depths of journalism and content writing uh, right. I mean, we were talking about how writing has always dynamized his inner voice. Uh, he's currently grasping a fascinating experience at, at, at this site. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Show. Here's every possibilities and interesting things explained. Strange things were restored for the fourth season. I guess I just said it. <laughs> uh, in September. Wait, I, didn't, I didn't hear it. I actually, uh, no, Skype, Skype actually dropped out. Oh, that's great. That's great. Hearing. Okay. Uh, yeah. show was restored for the fourth season in September of a year ago with a secret video. And from that moment, the hypothesis market closed. Each fan has a different hypothesis and confirmation to legitimize the perceptible story. Be that as it may, we will try to combine the realities and speculations to materialize something generous and essential. So far, the show has been at its best, and the characters are built in such a way that fans never cease to amaze. The show is included around the children of the city of Blank and an impressive laboratory where some risky movements are being made. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprisingly, fans are excited about the blank season. The, the other season <clears throat> has kept the options open, and in the case that we were to take a hypothesis, a new story can be made. If we quote the web report at the that sorry at that time, it is said with certainty that there will also be another season. However, we will focus on this season information related to the story and various perspectives. <laughs> Title of show season blank. Release date. As of now, we don't have an official holiday date. In any case, if we check the record when the program was first launched in July 2016 and the following season in October 2017, also in this way, the third season calls for a postponement. And it was launched in July 2019. The hole between the first and second season was approximately 12 months. However, the third season took about two years to restore. 
The hole in the second and third season can be somewhat disappointing in the sense that as this pattern progresses, discharge rates may reach August 2021. In any case, at this time, it is an ideal opportunity to cross your fingers and believes that this will not be the time for the fourth season. Show season blank story. Character turned out and was oh, an influence. What, oh, you got it? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, do you want to do the whole thing or? Oh no, no, no. I mean, I'll, I'll look. I'll, I, I can read this shit all night long. This is the best. This is my new favorite website. Uh, oh yeah, a hundred percent. This is the Price Is Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you, here I'll tell you what. I'm gonna go ahead and start reading character names. <clears throat> Joyce turned and was an influence, but nothing else proved that Hopper kicked the bucket. <laughs> Several oh, this is Stranger Things. <laughs> Stranger okay. Things Season 4. Yeah, the, the title of this is uh, Stranger Things Season 4. Here's every possibilities and interesting things explained. No. Where are you? What? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you to... reading? <laughs> so these are articles from a website called thedigitalweekly.com, which, after browsing the homepage, is definitely an Indian website. <laughs> <laughs> so we were trying to figure out if this is translation foo or just all AI nonsense engine. I mean, you wouldn't <clears throat> think that maybe it's also English as a second language thing. Um, that seems pretty far off like like that like there's like they're misidentifying genders and and uh <laughs> uh scraping some other stuff aria um, grande ariana grande isn't she single anymore it was not secure when ariana grande fell in love while his relationship with lyricist mac miller was not definitive he noted his devastation when he died so uh <laughs> yeah i mean yeah that's uh, uh... Man, that's some crazy trash. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is de I I this is on some level definitely a trans like a a translation a hundred percent of the website. This is, yeah, this is either a digital translation of an Indian website or it's it it's English language stuff for an Indian stuff or for for an Indian readers that obviously are not going to have the same rigors of English because the, the crowd's not going to be the same. Man, I was so convinced <clears throat> that this is all AI-generated everything <clears throat> because it's like it doesn't really say anything. It just uh, it just scoops everything into circular uh, discussions in, in sort of um, what, like like we talked about, what looks like mistranslated English. Oh. Well, what do, you, what do you say you dump that into the AI generator? Right, the one that we had that. Oh, yeah. Yes, that the one that the, the, AI the, the generator. porn bot. Yeah, 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 and just see what happened. Let's see. Let me do that. Let me go to. Let me try to find one of the. That's pretty good. Uh, there's a Lost in Space season three. Everything we should know. Talk to Transformer.com. I got an article here. Bond 25. No time to die. New pictures of the mysterious villain with mask revealed. Uh, I mean, that just sounds like random entertainment clickbait. Uh, yeah, but also, let's see, as seen. Like it actually, well, no, not not like like for real, for real cl uh, clickbait, but like the mm -hmm. stuff that's in the little boxes down below actual websites. Oh sure, uh, my uh, my skin rash cleaned up instantly with this one old trick, and and J Lo was there. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, it's always like, like like the one the one reason why this uh, person that was in a, a, the, the the fourth lead in a famous movie from 20 years ago doesn't work anymore <laughs> uh -huh. in the meantime <clears throat> while uh, Bryce is putting that in let's get the hottest news about season three of lost in space turns out Justin mm -hmm. the Robinson family that is playing as the protagonist of the program will definitely return to the program since the program is not possible without them. So parents, John and Maureen are definitely lost in space. Oh shit. <laughs> They're still in space. Yeah, that's right. They will return in year three. Oh. The second generation of the Robinson family, kids, Judy, Will, and Penny Taylor Russell paid by played by Maxwell Jenkins and Mina Sundwal will also return to the show. <clears throat> as the story revolves around them from the first season. <laughs> oh, anyway. 
Uh, uh, all right, what here, do we got? We've got, uh, this is via talktotransformer.com. We put in the first and last appearance of Daniel Craig as James Bond in the next No Time to Die is the 25th movie of the long-running Super Spy series. The AI added, as with earlier entries, he will reunite with the two previous stars of this film, Russell Crowe and <laughs> Javier Bardem. <laughs> <laughs> but has had a revolving door of leads. Julianne Moore, Ben Wishaw, Jez Butterworth, Mel Gibson, Pierce Brosnan, and Craig, to name but a few. Mel Gibson! In... Man, I love Jez Butterworth. <laughs> in Jez this... Butterworth is my fave. In, in this Bond genre film, no stranger to stars or movies he's appeared in, Daniel Craig is playing Sherlock Holmes's first assistant. <laughs> And this film this will again be set in the London of the 1950s. Oh my God, dude, this movie is lit. <laughs> this is the best. This is the best thing we've ever discovered. Right. Oh, we we're gonna be billionaires of script writing. <laughs> yeah, hot pitch. I got a bold new refresh for the Bond franchise. Oh, we take it to so, the past, boys. Oh. oh. Actually, 1950s Sherlock Holmes, James Bond would be so Are freaking you right. No, like this is brilliant. We, we, oh. we, dude, this is oil. This is Texas tea, <laughs> <laughs> bubbling crude. Oh, here we go. Uh, this article from the DigitalWeekly.com: How to know if your crush likes you back? 20 signs every person on this planet should know. I'm gonna pop this into Talk to Transformer, and uh, here we go. What we put in is, if you wonder what this flirting contact and constant contact could do, how can you say if someone likes you so that you can begin moving on this understanding, colon? Uh, don't be persistent. <laughs> now, if you're the person who gets really persistent and persistent, it's a problem. You don't think this part That's is very right. funny. BJP, in what I've read about India, your books don't just talk about love. It talks about romance but for a non-narrative book how do you see as the future of non-narrative romance ck <laughs> hold on hold on real quick did it suddenly turn into an interview yeah <laughs> it did <laughs> ck i definitely think that romantic fiction is dying it is dying because of romantic fiction <laughs> but there is a wow, certain kind of dude, romance that's deep deep shit <laughs> it's real hard hitting oh, oh gosh computers y'all oh, oh my god how are you doing, Juice? Oh. oh my God, man! It's a uh, it's a crazy world out there. Hot, fresh off the flight mm -hmm. in the Granite State, cross country, literally ocean to ocean, and uh, now we're ready to do some some comedy. Thank you guys for being uh, being being flexible here to uh, accommodate this crazy schedule. Yeah, of course. I mean, that? how big of a day could it have been? I mean, name one presidential candidate that's dropped out of the race in the last twenty four hours. Uh, Deval Patrick, <laughs> but there were two the night before, so we're on a real run. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, no, I uh, uh, man, yeah, the, the, this morning began with me uh, calling or texting Andrew Heaton because he had left his shirts, and so a very uh, um, a scampering Andrew Heaton came back to get his shirts, and now I'm here with you. And in between, I've spoken to a professor and published a podcast. And, it's, uh, it's crazy times, man. Putting in work. Hampshire was cold. You're hustling. It's very cold. Mm -hmm. How yeah, uh, I don't, I don't like the cold, man. I can't, I can't cotton with it. Oh, it's funny. Uh, uh, Andrew Heaton was calling the place Narnia. He thought it was oh, delightful. No, yeah, yeah, dude. If you thought that that episode was him rejoicing about the uh, snow speckled hills of New Hampshire, imagine rooming with him. <laughs> it's it, like all he. He found it. He was so entranced with it that he literally found out that, like, he loves Portland, Edinburgh, and New Hampshire. And so he literally mapped out the long or the, the latitudinal uh, corridor for which is his favorite <laughs> on Earth, which is, I, I believe, like, 42 to 55 degrees latitude is, is Andrew Heaton's sweet spot for whatever reason. Did, uh, uh, did... I think it's because he just likes buttons. That dude is con he is never he like without a button shirt. like just fifty buttons minimum. Like I I look at it if I, if I have one button on my pants, I'm like you know maybe science, Lord willing, will get this thing off me before I shed this mortal co mortal coil. But 
He's like, hell no, dude. Like dozens of buttons at all times, sleeping and awake. That is a uh, uh, one of those uh, special rare cases where um, uh, the misspeak, I think, is more appropriate. If you're trying to unbutton your pants, then you need science to shed your moral coil. Yes, true. Yeah, I do. I want it. I want it you just know, to accidentally you know, You're probably up out. to no good if you're trying to get your pants exactly. unbuttoned. That was, uh, that was the yeah. joke. Wow. I, I he, had, he almost said moral coil, and then he corrected himself to mortal. And I was yeah. saying that. That was never. Yeah, right. See, I... Uh, but, uh, Let me just read you this AI-generated <laughs> okay. uh, story about that missed uh, joke. <clears throat> How to tell what uh, the moral coil is. Wait, can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 What's up? Okay. All right. No, yeah, I was just trying to talk. And, uh, oh, no, and, please. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, yeah, 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 no. Let's, let's go back to the AI thing. Uh, also, by the way, uh, everybody, see Robert Cargill going to be on the show tonight. So uh, uh, stick around. Yeah, thank God that he doesn't sleep. I was about so to say, man, uh, he's, yeah. he probably hasn't even had second breakfast yet. Mm -mm. Only on his fourth whiskey. Man. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, how far off are you from studio? Uh, I am just about to get on the Bay Bridge. So I am the Bay Bridge away from... Where uh, where I am, so I would say probably just either right at eight or just a, just a touch after eight. Cool. All right, um, so we got like twenty minutes. Yeah, we should be good. Oh yeah 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 yeah. No, we got that. We got that. I uh, I saw this on 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 Twitter. There's a uh, website or a, a Twitter account relationships. txt at Reddit ships, which just posts like when there are good threads on r slash relationships. Uh, and this one popped up very recently. Uh, I, a 35-year-old man, have barely worked at my job for the last four years and have been hiding the fact from my 34-year-old female wife. Uh, it, it, it's it's kind of long, but he basically says he's been a senior manager and does about 15 minutes of work uh, a day. And uh, he is afraid to tell his wife about it. That's the big deal. Is His wife is like a lawyer and very stressed, and they have kids. Oh. Yeah. So he's got a cush gig, and mm -hmm. he's afraid to tell her. Uh, he says, I can pack lunches, clean the house, do the bills, pick up my son, and generally try to be as helpful as possible, because I think it's only fair since I don't really do anything at work. She wonders how I have so much energy, how I'm in such a good shape, and how I'm so happy. And I think she's beginning to worry that I might be having an affair. <laughs> That's hilarious. But wait, so he's doing all the things like because uh, I would think he would definitely be an a-hole if he was like, like, uh, hey, look, it's 50 50. Right. We both have jobs. But it sounds like he's he's being a good guy and, and actually picking up more of the slack. Yeah. And, and he feels morally bad that he is so acutely aware that while he is making money, he's <laughs> virtually doing no work. Uh, I had originally quote I had originally hid my level of inactivity at work from her four years ago because I was extremely stressed due to problems with my extended family and problems with myself and I just decided to never tell her how easy the job had gotten. I figured I needed a few months of vacation. Uh, now it has gotten of hand out of hand. It's four years deep and my wife still doesn't know about the situation. I mean, isn't that functionally equivalent to just being awesome at your job, like? I mean, isn't this legit? Like, let's say, let's say Michael Jordan didn't need to practice. Uh, isn't that something he could say? Yeah. Like, you know, I don't know. I mean, I just go for 90 minutes. I, I mean, I spend half of that sitting on a bench and then I put a ball in a hoop and now, you know, I'm bringing all the money. I just feel bad. I mean, I've been hiding it from her for so long. I guess. Yeah, that would be the question. The question is what would change if she knew? Like, like, what do you think that the reaction would be if, if he was like, oh, my God, not only do I do nothing at work, but I feel like I've been hiding it from you. Uh, uh, like, what would change? Like, functionally, probably nothing. I mean, unless it, it exacerbate trust issues. Well, I hey, mean, what, what this person says, I know I did something wrong, but I am worried she's going to react really negatively because she works really hard at her job, is a great mother, and has really been feeling stressed lately. Wait, he, he said he knows he did something wrong? Mm, 
Yes. That's really weird. I've been covering up how little I work at my actual job and I get tons of free time and have not been letting my wife know this fact. Is is there a reason that you're sharing this specifically with Justin and I? No, no I just <laughs> because <laughs> I just figured we're reading long blocks of text. There's a funny thing because here I saw. We both have wives that work really hard. <laughs> <laughs> and in my case, she's an awesome mom. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. uh no, just uh sharing funny stuff. But I mean like, like for real though, like what what would change? Like nothing would change, right? Um, I think if you've it depends misrepresented, on... I think there's a but lot even, of little bits. Then, I think there's a lot of okay. little bits. All right, what are the little bits? Like, like any time, like I, I think that there is a very casual, a lot of very small little casual lies, of like, how was your day? Oh, it was fine, or like, like. If if what he's concerned about is his feeling like he does nothing you can't at work, ring then a man saying, up for, for saying how was your day fine when it was secretly better than I think, fine. I think, I I think I Bryce is tapping into the real crime though. The real crime is not having a job that is so easy. That's clearly good. if he knows he did something wrong, then it implies that he's feeling guilty because he has acted like like, like you he's know, got she a job said, oh my god I, I i spent six hours on this brief and then i had this two-hour meeting and then i had this other thing blah 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 how mm -hmm. was your day like and then almost certainly he overrepresented the amount of work he did yeah and this is why he feels painted into a corner because i think i think well, both right, yeah if that's if that's if that's the case then it's a trust thing right mm -hmm. then then he is he is creating a mythology around his work day or he was that is incorrect or he was uh, he, lying by omission, right? Like letting her, clearly letting her on purpose think that he was working as hard as she did. Because if he feels guilt, the way you feel guilt I guess the, is if you do nothing all day and then you sit there and and you know read AI articles about Rick and Morty while your wife spends another two hours putting the kids down or whatever. Mm -hmm. Unrelatedly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here here, here we are on Night Attack. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I guess, like, 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 for real, there would definitely be a problem if he's, like, creating a world. And also, I could understand feeling guilt if, like, she's doing things for him the way that she would want uh, him to do for her because she assumes he's stressed. So she's hmm. taking time out of her day to be like, well, man, we both have tough jobs, so let me go do this thing to make you feel good. But even then, the only thing that really makes him a cheese weasel is if, He's he's taking liberties with like, OK, well, like because it sounds like he's taking more than his fair share of all the the things that would actually matter if if he were to like lie and say like, oh, honey, mm -hmm. burn in the midnight oil tonight. Like, literally, he had nothing to do and he's just you know, screwing around because I, I think I think we're both I think we're all of the same mind that like if this is your gig like keep it like I, and i i think she would probably have felt the same way if it wasn't four years into that experience i think i think the i think the crime is not really bad and i think the omission of truth like i don't even think i would consider it a lie but i think it would be very weird it would just be a very weird thing to be like, oh yeah, this job is, my job has been like crazy easy and I barely don't do anything. And it's been that way forever. And, I mean, and then suddenly that's like, it, the, I don't think, I think it's just that you hid anything. Not that there was anything wrong, but the fact that it was hidden. I don't know. The, well, the, uh, this also seems like such an easy fix, no matter how far adrift you've gotten in terms of allowing her to perceive you as working hard, mm -hmm then <clears throat> all you have to do is take a very short amount of time to correct course. You, you start talking constantly about how it's like, you work much harder than I do. Your mm -hmm. job is much yeah. harder than mine is. Yeah. You work, how many, tell me about your day? Wow, I don't feel like I work anywhere near that hard. And you reinforce that message with increasingly specific and accurate descriptions of your actual day so that within two months, you say, look, we've talked about this. You know I only work 15 minutes a day. Surely there's something I could be doing to help alleviate your workload while I'm at this job that is clearly fraudulent that I don't know how long I'll have. Mm. By the way, it sounds like I'm probably going to have it forever from the description of this Reddit post.
Uh, so there. So wait a minute. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Question to you then, Brian. Let's say we followed the Brushwood plan on this one, yes. and now we are slowly introducing into the world the accurate uh, uh, time frame and responsibilities. Also, can we please At not call it the Brushwood point, plan? <laughs> it's the Brushwood plan. TM the uh, hmm. uh, uh, the Brushwood plan right there. You know, official. Um, at that point, do you have to say how long it's been like that? Or Well, that's the part is that, that is like not clear from the post, because clearly yeah. he perceives that he's committed a crime, and we are guessing that the crime is actively giving her the impression that he's worked harder or has to work harder or is mm -hmm. less available than he actually is. And so there are, there yeah. are some responses that he's posted that may give us a little bit of insight. Uh, she's a lawyer, so she has a stressful career. My corporation is boring. She does know my job is easier than hers, but has no clue how much easier it truly is. Um, by the third and now fourth year, I am basically scared at this point. I'm happy that I don't have any work to do, but I am scared for when I tell her, uh, for her to be like, what WTF have you been doing these four years? You know what I mean? Um, I worry it would become a point of animosity between us when I tell her, but I am thinking I need to tell her or quit the job, especially if she thinks we are on different wavelengths wavelengths because of suspected worse reasons the affair or not being compatible anymore um like my reason is bad but i guess i figured things could be a lot worse huh. yeah nothing about the level of guilt this person is expressing tracks with the level of crime he seems to be talking about yeah don't you get the sense that this man is either an olympic level worry wart or his, there's something else happening in the relationship like that has kind of frayed their communication or he's out and out just like scared of her because of, she's scared that, that a reaction will be disproportionate. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, clearly whatever it is he's worried about isn't the fact that he has an easy job. And uh, it's, and eh, all of this really reads like somebody who was up to something in all those unaccounted for hours and wants to just act like it's, you know, the guilt of working so less hard. So why would he lie to Reddit? I guess that's the other vector of it. Uh, no, I think like... he's lying to himself. That That's how you get there, is okay. you lie to yourself and act like that's the real crime, is that you have an easier gig when the real crime is actively, like, like maybe you don't admit to yourself and you don't admit to Reddit that, no, 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 you actively misled your wife and intentionally did these things like Bryce was talking about to lead her to believe that, uh, that, that, that you are working when you're not working. Okay. Because the, the wild thing about it is him saying that he quit the job. Like, I don't think that that would have, that would Wait, he did, really, he did, like... he did quit the job? No, he was in, no, 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 in the no, follow-up. He said he would. Oh, why? Why would you do that? In order that's not, my point that yeah. that's why i'm like i'm like dude that's crazy because i don't think in any world anyone wants the he, him to quit the job maybe she would want him to take on more stuff or maybe that would that dude is banging his boss the of the relationship but i guess that that really is what he's worried about if we're gonna <laughs> i love how also for, like, like this is definitely a personality test because i immediately blame the wife and you immediately blame the dude writing <laughs> yeah, like, I, I well, well, because I immediately was like, like that wife overreacts, and obviously it's like, I, you know, I don't blame her, right? She's you know raising kids and has a really stressful job, but he's afraid of that rage, and so now he is hiding from that rage, so and you're like, let me detail the malfeasance that this man is is committing. Uh, either with or without his own uh, full acknowledgement. So uh, let me trace, since you can't see the chat, and for the audio listeners, um, a, gr a funny thing happened. I said the word, that dude is fucking his boss. And then uh, Mabombo cube, cube in the chat, all caps, says, yes, next line. He is fucking boss, <laughs> which, which I don't know which way to interpret. Like, is that is that a statement of jealousy and awe or is that is that a, an agreement that he's having sex with his superior? No, I think he's he's saying he's, he rules. He's, he's the he's boss. Uh, we get another response oh, here. It's oh. you're right. I feels like if it's me feeling like I'm not pulling my weight when we were uh, when we met, we were both very career driven. Uh, now I'm not a driven career person, but that doesn't mean I can't offer more support. I basically feel like Hal in that episode of Malcolm in the Middle, where Lois learns he just fucked around every Friday for his entire career while my wife is grinding it out doing serious law hours. Okay. 
if your moral center, if your compass, which I think tracks with with what I'm saying, is there's I think Malcolm it's a, in the middle. Is Malcolm in the middle? <laughs> it's like it's a, it's it's a million little it's a million paper cuts, right? It's it's all of the little lies and ways where if they both both were on the same page about how much his work uh, work yeah, I mean, is, I guess like uh, he probably would have done even more. I mean, it's a bit like what constitutes cheating. You know, there are couples where, uh, uh, you know, the idea looking at pornography, uh, they both they both have objectively agreed is cheating, and then someone does it and feels the guilt or whatever. And then there's other couples where it's like, who the fuck cares, right? Um, I think this is one of those things where I think that they have agreed on a moral center that involves like, hey, we give all of our time to the family unless it's taken by work. And he has been um, uh, de defecting in that prisoner's dilemma for a while. And he knows it in his heart, whether or not like, like none of us understand right. where it's, but we don't know their agreement or whatever. Just, just like, I think the three of us would be like, you know, who the fuck cares if you're looking at titties and touching your wiener, right? But then it's like, sorry, I didn't mean to look directly, it's directly at me when that. he said that sorry <laughs> I, I didn't think that would be as weird as it oh, was oh, boy, like, but it was act, very act weird like there's ever a, 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 act, act like there's ever a, a, a javai twitter post that you don't retweet like <laughs> you at least have culpability there <laughs> oh god damn um Mm -hmm. uh, but at any rate, I, I think that he knows he's defecting on their agreements. He says, looking into the monitor and not <laughs> into Bryce's I'm eyes. I'm going to look over the <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I think that's where, what the source of all of this is. And I think in that regard, I mean, that's their arrangement. That's their uh, conclusion, you know, whatever. The, the same thing with like, uh, there are some marriages where it would be a massive betrayal of trust if somebody uh, was smoking dope on the side or whatever and never got around to talk, telling his wife. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah. then, you know, so yeah, just, just swap it out. Like for four years, uh, once a week I get high, I've never told my wife, it's crushing me. Like that mm -hmm. doesn't sound so weird. So for whatever reason, this this version of, it, 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 it appears to be, to him perceived as a break in their uh, agreement. Oh, there's no, there's, there's no doubt that, uh, yeah, that's what it is. Like there is, there is an internal thing that he feels is an imbalance, but what is most important is that we solve this once and for all by entering the first sentence in to the AI bot. So we can <laughs> Thank find goodness. Out what yeah. It thinks. <laughs> let's, oh let's, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> let's get the rest of the story. Cause I feel like we <laughs> already have figured out that he's only giving us part of the story. What we need to exactly. do is get the rest get of the, the story. Rest they of should the call story. it Paul Harvey bot. And then uh, uh, that's an old reference that nobody gets. Woof. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm going to plug in. You I see, children, radio used to be a thing. <laughs> I've plugged in. I am a senior manager for sales analytics for a division of an extremely large corporation. The AI adds, this is my first blog, so please bear with me. I want to draw attention to the trends that are going on, both by occupation and by employment sector. The only profession to make a significant increase over the past decade, with some firms having doubled their number since 2004, is sales and consulting. What that means is more jobs for salespeople, but those salespeople are not likely to be selling their own products, nor selling at a competitive price. Even what? even small changes in employment and by occupation is very significant. <laughs> One can observe the financial sector in the chart below. It really graph generated with like you can tell that it's also started to like write the credit for a graph. <laughs> um, it kind of bothers me that the AI bot has much more cogent articles than than that news site. <laughs> yeah. uh, apparently, so this yeah, that's why that's why I'm I'm positive that, that the news site is not AI. Like it is too because AI would be AI better. It would be better than that. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, I think they upgraded the Talk to Transformer website when we first found out about it. It was using the light version of MT2 or GPT2 uh, that they had publicly released, and then when they pull out, put out the full uh, model of the GPT2 text generation thing, uh, I think they upgraded this website to use it. So it should technically be even better than it was. X motive has a really silly, really old person, funny idea to me. <laughs> Throw the beginning of a Paul Harvey transcript into the AI and see if it's able to give us the rest of the story. The rest of the book, <laughs> the rest of the story. Yes. <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> I like if I were the devil. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's what we've got here. Uh, da, da, da. Mm. Oh my gosh. 
This is uh, partially attributed. Uh, it went straight to a Snopes article to find out whether or not this is an actual Paul Harvey thing, but that's that's yeah. cool with me. Uh, now, now, does the does the AI do better if you do give it more, or does it do worse? I think if you get, I mean, we can try to give it a lot. Let's yeah, let's give it the first paragraph. Okay, this is a little bit of a lengthy paragraph. We're gonna so, plug in a talk to Transformer dot com. Okay, so here I'll I'll, I'll read it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, are you able to make that a little bigger? Uh, yeah. Uh, if I were the devil, the prince of darkness, what methods of deception would I use to rule the world? What areas of society should I target? Would I target? What tactics would I employ? In the transcript below, Paul Harvey in 1965 airs one of the most astonishing monologues ever recorded. Now, nearly 50 years later, oh, this everything is that Paul whole... oh. Harvey said the devil would have to do to rule the world world has come to pass. I'm going to guess it's it's either attributed to Trump and or Obama. Uh, Paul Harvey was not a prophet, nor were his words prophetic, but how then did 100% of what he said in 1965 come true? Perhaps the devil himself listened to the broadcast, which you're about to read, will, without doubt, raise a few eyebrows and goosebumps, enjoy, or rather be appalled with the rest of the story. So unfortunately, so I don't think we, that's going to feed it enough. Uh, we didn't, yeah, we didn't actually grab the actual story there. Yeah, yeah, we didn't get, we didn't get the transcript. We got the... Uh... That's how, we it's basically got, all that. It, 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 it's all that shit that comes in when you're trying to look up a recipe online, and then they write fifty. We you know, just talked about talking this. about that. We Holy just cow! About that. That's uh, yeah, that's man. a Goog that's a Google SEO thing. If you didn't know about that, yeah, that's a that's some bullshit, is what it is. You just <laughs> tell me how long I need to put this shit in my air fryer. <laughs> uh, do Do we want to keep this actual this lead in mono, or should we delete uh, that? No, yeah, delete no, that, no, and no, then we'll no, we'll no, just yeah. keep it. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so here's the rest of the story. It begins, this is the part that, how it begins. Mm -hmm. If I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness, and I would have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree, the, and now, the rest of the story. It would be best <laughs> for me if my universe consisted of one inch of slime, one inch of poisonous-looking musk, and one inch of brick. <laughs> What a nosegay this was. In the 1870s, I would spread it on a wicker trunk, put in some rusty nails to hold it in place, then set off for London. By the time I got to that city, I'd be wearing the stuff. Oh, my God. This is amazing. Oh, not quite. Don't quite. I don't know if Snopes really... <laughs> What is no nosegay is a word? <laughs> what is a nosegay? It's a bird. <laughs> My universe consisted of one inch of slime, one inch of poisonous looking musk, and one inch of brick. That's the whole universe, my dude? <laughs> what dude, a nosegay is, that this is was. That is so metal. That is so metal. One inch of slime, one inch of slime. What is a poisonous looking mud? What is a prick? Oh, apparently the reason this was on uh, on Snopes is because there are multiple versions of this essay floating around. Uh, how many of them Obama? How many Trump? <laughs> Um, how many of them slime? How many of them poisonous looking musk? And how many nosegays? <laughs> how many brick? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and set off to London in the 1950s for yeah, Bond and Sherlock. In the stuff. Uh, wait, do we know what? So a nosegay is a bird? Yeah. Is it? I'm gonna oh. Google nosegay and yeah, a no. No, it's a. It's a. Oh, it's a flower. Sorry. It's a flower. <laughs> a posy or a tussy mussy, which is also what I call. My nose oh, guy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> James Bond and Sherlock Holmes. What business are they running in the 1950s? <laughs> London <laughs> has them there. Oh. Oh my goodness. Hello, everybody. Oh, Jesus it's Christ. Uh, all right, uh, we're, we're we're pulling into my neighborhood here now. Okay. So uh, let me let me drop off and then I'll look. All right, call us when you're ready. Look, if we're just filling yeah. air. Uh, I don't think I can ever get enough of <laughs> the want real more? Paul RV rest of the story. Oh, okay. Give me just one more. Yeah. Uh, let's, oh. do, let's do the second paragraph. How about that? Okay. <clears throat> Though I think, let me see. Because now we're getting into the part that they have, is definitely on Snopes. Uh, Hold on. No, maybe this part's right. Okay. Well, whatever. Here we go. Uh, do you want to read so, us the yeah. beginning? <clears throat> 
So I would set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. Whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve, do as you please. And now, the rest of the story. I would act as a kind, if not kindly, boss. We would both have many desires. We would both be proud. I would cajole the people to be more mindful of me, to take more notice of me, and I would require an effort and sacrifice from you, my sister. I would always be there in the shadows, my task the continuation of the grander plan. We would stay tight together and make certain our deaths were closer together. <laughs> This is like this is this is shockingly this is good. like like I mean, how long until oh man, what if you gaslit a kid and you did print on demand books mm -hmm. and you just fed in the first paragraph of every important book you're ever supposed to read and you just made it fill in with generated text that's right hundreds and, and, of pages and, and, and of generated so, text so oh shit what if that's what ha here's like a high person thought what if that's Whoa. the real what, what if they were doing that to us <laughs> but it's like like what if war and peace you know it just had the you know the best of times worst, worst of times everything yeah. else was just made up by an ai bot that would be cool i'm sure there is because this this talk to transformer website only generates a limited amount of text but i think it, it would be relatively r relatively easy i say uh to make a much larger model of this. what's a what's a fa oh um get, uh, you know, uh, feed in the beginning of the telltale heart oh, we'll, yeah. we'll do some edgar Allan poe that's and then good then that's clever where it takes it god this is so much fun Let's see make sure i get the right one here yes here we go we'll just put the four first paragraph all right here we go the first paragraph all right here we go <clears throat> telltale heart uh, I'm not going to say it like Paul Harvey. <laughs> True. <laughs> Nervous. Very, very. Oh, I don't know if I ever told you this. When I was in sixth grade and we did uh, theater arts tournaments. You killed a guy and put him on your floor. This was the the monologue I read. Uh, oh, cool. Or, uh, you had to do dramatic reading. Yeah. And, uh, so I, I have not. I read these words and knew them by heart when I was in sixth grade mm -hmm. and have not read them since. <clears throat> True, nervous, very, very dreadfully nervous I had been and am. But why will you say that I'm mad? The disease that had sharpened my senses, not destroyed, not dulled them. Above all was the sense of hearing acute. I heard all things in the heaven and the earth. I heard many things in hell. How then am I mad? Hearken and observe how healthily, how calmly I can tell you the whole story. So uh, uh, for those who don't know, dude kills a dude. Chops him up, puts him under the floorboard, becomes convinced he hears the beating heart, goes crazy, announces his guilt. Here is the rest of the story. <laughs> I had written a book and was taking it to a publishing house. One afternoon it came into my hands. It was somewhat obscure but full of insights. I made my trial of the thing. I read it. I gave it a bad review. But I couldn't understand. Oh, it really didn't give us much at all. Oh, I'll tell you what. Take you what it gave us and feed that in. Because I want to hear the oh, rest of this. The rest of the That's good. <laughs> or, yeah, sk uh, skipping the, 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 oh, yeah? the okay. part, the original seed. Sure. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, delete, 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 delete. All right. I had written a book and was taking it to a publishing house. One afternoon it came into my hands. It was somewhat obscure, but full of insights. I made my trial of the thing. I read it. I gave it a bad review, but I couldn't understand why. why. I went back to take another look and could see through it. The book was open in a magazine. The magazine had written of the book, A Rich Man's Allegory. <laughs> what made you see the truth? I knew that it was plagiarism. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hard left turn. I knew that it was deliberate. I didn't want to know about that, so I won't know about it. But I saw it, and it made sense. The main characters and the dialogue were the same. Please feed that paragraph in. I got to know what happens next. Okay. Yeah, no, or, yeah, or just the last part. There you go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, oh, wait. Hold on. Let me... There we go. The rest of the story. The right. dialogue were the same in both. Steig <laughs> Steigler. Character named Steigler. <laughs> There's a character suddenly named Steigler. Steigler. 
Yes, but they're not identical. I was able to... <laughs> right? He's solving the crime. I was able to read the script in one take and then the musical in another. But there were enough times where I was aware of them as the part to which I was entrusted, where I was aware that I was doing them the same. But I wasn't aware of the originality of the second version. And if that weren't the case, then I was expected to carry that on. <laughs> I want to know what Steigler does. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh. And if that weren't the case, then I was expected to carry that on. Talk about the tension between improvisation and routine. You don't do that much. You do a bit of improv and a bit of it's going to go as planned. And then at another point you realize, oops, I've misread my part and I'm going to have to do it. <laughs> well, let's just see what they got there. <laughs> I'm going to have to do it all again. I really need to get it right. I need to think through it, break it down, and plan it out, really. <laughs> it's a lot of improv on stage, <laughs> and on hopefully stage. people can see that. This is a really modern work. Yeah. There's no element of it being based on a specific event like Beowulf or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> you don't think, oh, I don't know how to play this part. It's very modern, but it's very... But it's very what? <laughs> I swear to God, if all of a sudden it starts talking about how he murdered a dude and put chopped up the body and put him <laughs> in the floorboards and he's going crazy from the heart. Uh, you don't you don't think, oh, I don't know how to play this part. It's very modern, but it's very informed by Hollywood and Western culture. The notion of moving on to the next film has an effect on children who find a lot of the characters hard to identify with. Do you think that has changed with time? There's definitely a youth recreation of child actor as child actor, whether that's with Robert Downey Jr., who seems like a happy medium in that it's not a film about him as a complete loner, but then there's, but there's an element of him being able to let some of the silliness come through. But that, of course, is reduced. <laughs> With Idris Elba, it is very. It was very difficult to read. <laughs> oh my God! Just go that last line. <laughs> we go from RDJ to Idris Elba. With Idris Elba, it was very difficult to read the actor's face. His expression was very distinct. Wait. And I knew he was dead inside. It was very difficult to read how easy it was to read how dead inside Idris Elba was by his face. <laughs> um, uh. Oh, that's interesting. It's got a close quote, but no open oh, quote. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, I knew he was dead inside, but uh, he would have just have he would just have so many thoughts running through his head in different ways. Kyla tells the Post regarding the details of the show's cast session, which was conducted in London's famous Soho. Elba then went on to describe <laughs> his character in this way: "Quote: Yes, he has the metal arm, but he's a pacifist. He's an incredible character. There's a wonderful complexity to him, and I think the fans will love him." End quote. <gasps> It's amazing that a man who's finally made it as an actor can articulate such a complex character so clearly. It's the kind of nuance. Man, Edgar Allan Poe was who? truly a visionary. <laughs> <laughs> who is that this motherfucker predicted? I wonder who this character, uh, um, a character with a metal arm. Oh, that's got to be the Winter Soldier. That's got to oh. be an out of reference, they, uh, an out of context reference. Yeah, to that, right? Idris Elba in the second, the yeah, second Winter Soldier. Yeah, probably some some uh, uh, early article explaining that that introduction. Spiderbite says, I think that metal arm quote is verbatim of Josh Brolin saying that about Cable. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, Chris Cable from Deadpool. Yeah. I guess x -Men. I mean, it's the kind of nuance. Mm. Uh, oh, that's interesting. I wonder, uh, Take what if you take that quote and paste it with the quotations into Google and see if Google recognizes it? Yes, he has the metal arm, but he's a pacifist. Uh, do not find the not find it, it comes with, up with Adam Driver, the original man. Oh Jesus! <laughs> List of memoir quotes from the first. Uh, that's that's the Twilight fandom wiki. Yeah? <laughs> uh, Catch twenty two: the awful truth people miss about Heller's great novel. Quotes I have enjoyed from Doctor Robert Heckendorn. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Five on Steam. God, uh, I I like that AI is so good. I. Don't uh, that that might be a, a game is which is a translation like there could be three possibilities. Mm. It's either a translation, translation, uh, an AI completion, or the actual article, mm. <laughs> and then uh, and then we'd have to figure out like what would be a source that it would be funny to read the actual article from. Mm. Now I just typed in yes he has the metal arm but he's a pacifist, and while not definitive, two different uh, Bucky Barnes. Uh, uh, Winter Soldier pages came up. Yeah, but he's not a pacifist. 
I guess I, 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 I'm, I'm the one who asked the, you to look it up. The, the, <laughs> but, but now I'm realizing the fault in my logic because he's definitely you know, a weaponized. Like, I, I, he's kind of a past. No, because he's definitely just waiting to be called into action by the end of the Avengers. Right. He's a sleeper. Yeah. He's, he's there chopping wood until it's time to go to war. Yeah. Go to war. Go to war. Oh, wait, give it song lyrics. Uh, oh, okay. uh, uh, what's a good prog rock, uh, uh, epic, uh, high fantasy, like Rush, um, uh, or, or, or Genesis, or, or Styx? Maybe Tom Sawyer? Oh, wait, wait. Uh, 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 take a snippet of Mr. Roboto. Okay. <clears throat> uh, uh, I could just recite it for you. <laughs> You're wondering who I am. I need a time. I mean, I, I'll just copy it. So okay. All right. <laughs> Machine or mannequin? <laughs> okay. Here, we'll, ju we'll just do that stanza from uh, from Secret, secret. I've got a secret. <laughs> You're wondering who I am, machine or mannequin, with parts made in Japan, I am the modern man. <clears throat> I can't. The rest of the song goes, I am the modern mannequin who shares our ideas. Every time you interact with me, I seem innocent, <laughs> simple person, but you know I'm not because I'm an evil machine <laughs> trying to invade people's dreams. Oh, no, not the dreams. I want you to be sure of that. <laughs> That's why I created my dream by digging it in the ground. <laughs> not a dream, but aside from strange and unexpected results <laughs> it's been a long time long time long time long time long time <laughs> since i wrote a poem <laughs> wrote a poem wrote a poem and we've forgotten how forgotten how forgotten how <laughs> to think in this horrible world horrible world horrible world <laughs> in despair i wrote hello yellow hello it's yellow hello <laughs> how are you today <laughs> is that dream nice <laughs> <laughs> this is good. That's this really this good. is. I th we don't Why need is this? Can we just release this as uh, this is a bank episode? Can we, can we just, can now? We just <laughs> let, let's take this episode and throw it in the motherfucking bank. <laughs> <laughs> Oh fuck! Hi, oh, Justin. Hey. Oh, look at that! Oh, look, look at that! Look at us! We look at us! We, oh, you're feeding back oh, to you're... us a little bit. Us a little bit. Uh, oh wait, my hold god! On, hold on! Hold on! Still uh, <laughs> trying to <laughs> Hey, uh, Justin. Hey, uh, we started. Uh, we started. Uh, we started feeding we started it sticks, sticks lyrics. Lyrics. And it wrote some pretty good variations on Mr. Roboto. <laughs> oh shit! Uh do you want to go from maybe we put in another stanza and see? Yeah, uh, yeah, go for it. Okay. So we, we'll get the rest of we got the first part of Mr. Roboto. Oh. Uh, oh, here we go. Why don't we do this part of this, the? Thank oh, there we go. Much, yep. Mr. Okay. Roboto. So, so yeah, as we all know, the song goes, "Thank you very much." It left, leaves out the macho, but thank you very much, oh, Mr. Roboto, for doing the jobs that nobody wants to. Thank you very much, oh, Mr. Roboto, for helping me escape just when I needed to. Hey, thanks again, Mr. Roboto. <laughs> you keep me fighting that cheers. See, that's how you know I'm a good Christian. <laughs> I'm a great Christian. Way through the rain, come on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Roboto. No. Oh, I got a choice. You want to live or die. The character you've created is what I can feel. I need to help hey, uh, to break through this wall. You got to be my friend. Just think of you as a superhero. And while I'm at it. <laughs> and while I'm at it. And while I'm at it. <laughs> All right, can we, can we do the beginning of the Humpty Dance? <laughs> okay, but uh, you you need to get ready to do the show. We have show. to do the show, yes, for reals. As that means you should go and take your get your drinks and okay. stuff now. All right, all right. I just want to. We'll do it. I, it's, right, it's, right, you right. go do that now. <laughs> Hi, Justin. Hi. Welcome back. Welcome to Terra Firma. Uh, you know, doing our best. Doing our best here. Trying we're trying, everybody. We're trying very hard. Trying, now, we're trying, we're trying, man. That's it. It's all you can ask of us. Uh, fucking, we, we are. We're just soldiering on. 
Uh, yes, honk, honk, honk. I had to change my Twitter avatar because I made a bet with Twitter and I lost. I lost the bet. You know, Bryce, you ever lose a bet? I uh, probably have lost a bet, but not with such consequence of having to change my Twitter avatar. You're not, you're not a very braggadocious sort like I am. I like to shoot my mouth off on the internet and challenge them and act like I'm a big fat know-it-all, but uh, as it turned out, fate had other ideas, Bryce. Yeah, so uh, explain explain this bet to me because I know I know I I think I know the details, but I think I'm missing context. So uh, this started last time. I mean, basically, I've just been making these kind of like whenever I think that something's really silly, mm -hmm. I will I will make a big stand on Twitter, right? Because I think, especially with politics, it's just kind of fun that way. And it gives everybody something to, you know, root for or against. So um, what happened this time was, uh, uh, well, just, just to give you context, sure. in the past I've said, like, if Hillary Clinton runs for president, I'll stream for a week in clown makeup, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, stuff like that. So this time uh, I had done it in Iowa – and uh, I think it was like a Biden thing that I said I would I would change my avatar to a clown and name myself like Shithead the Clown, the fam most famous dipshit clown of all time or something. All right. Kind of uh, <clears throat> kind of uh, maybe a little vulgar, but OK. okay. Sure. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something just something that it would be embarrassing for me to change it to. And then, and then so this time. I said Amy Klobuchar. Uh, uh you know that uh, uh, if Klobuchar you know, so finishes in third, yeah. I'll change my avatar to a goose and my name to "I'm the silliest goose around" and I eat my own goose shit. Yummy. <laughs> so indeed, Amy Klobuchar does come in third. The club momentum was real, and uh, uh, the the avatar and the name I have right now is is the only reason why I changed it from what I wrote was because Twitter does not allow usernames that long. <laughs> so I had to do a little bit of strategic editing. Mm -hmm. uh, but but there we go. I think I'm gonna take it down tomorrow though because I definitely like uh, I, I feel like I paid my penance. For you should have pinned hours. that. I saw that you did make a tweet that was like, "Hey, to all the new p political co contacts I've made, I this is a joke, and I will be back to normal tomorrow. Please don't I unfollow me." I was literally hanging out with like a host, an MSNBC <laughs> host last night at at. <laughs> the one of the the media bars or whatever and so it's like you know who knows i think i got followed by the head of vice's news ah, uh, nice political stuff so uh uh yeah so i'm I just immediately fucking embarrassed myself but you want to know what like really i don't give a shit about them as much as i give a shit about the audience so that's uh, that's really all i care about uh but there we go and yeah. i'm sure i'll shoot my mouth off and make some other bold dumb prediction uh uh uh, for for the for the Nevada one, yeah. Uh, name drop it. Uh, it's in. Listen to the PX3 episode Ooh. because Eden and I talk about it. So uh, you know, it's it's a quick thing, but you're gonna have to download if you want to know. There you go. Can you still get it at bonerwars.com? You can. I believe you can still get it at <laughs> bonerwars.com. It's just it's just easier to type out than. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I really got to change that front thing because I was blogging for a little bit, and I obviously haven't since October seventeenth, twenty nineteen. I, I okay. I was because I was wondering like, is this just a header gift? But you have the podcast link over here too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta get you. We gotta get you an iTunes link on here, yeah, homie. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to hit you up. I know. I know. I know. With I this. know. There's, a lot of, there's a lot of. There's a lot of shit I need to do with that website. Um, especially since it was so easy to do with the Raise the Dead website. Like I just need to do it i don't know why yeah oh yeah i did i met vermin supreme in fact uh, i know that uh i was in new hampshire for i mean i guess we should probably save this this is probably good show okay content. yeah oh <clears throat> all right you ready for the humpty dance oh i hope so I, I i finally just just calmed down um oh this has been this has been a really fun hour and change oh good I, <laughs> mm. well we're gonna have a, a good show coming up uh see robert cargill soon we actually in like 25 minutes and uh a new ground of apologizes for all right here we go hey uh justin i got one of my uh my karaoke go-to's here all right if you want to get uh, uh, yep. a crowd bouncing then uh, uh you you play the humpty dance and you sing these lyrics you're like <clears throat> yeah all right stop what you're doing because i'm about to ruin the image of the style that you're used to and then you continue 
<laughs> that you used to take your time because I'm about to ruin the kind of guy that laughs when he smokes. One day, I wanted to see if there were any other rappers that just mumbled on the mic, <laughs> not just run their own little entourage, which is what I was doing. My own little group of people, a bunch of y'all that could sit there and add to the song and add to the beat. They could go <laughs> off on their own or they could help the person who raps. I could rap from corporation records about how I used to rap on Empire. <laughs> <laughs> the Humpty Dance is your chance. Do the hump. Oh. <laughs> oh, I don't just laugh when I smoke. Oh shit! It's almost like um, what oh. like a Bo Burnham lot thing of like having having like metered out <laughs> song lyrics and then just like have a mini monologue in the middle. Of it. Oh, oh, this would be a fun game to actually play the uh, the like we could do this live where we play the karaoke version, but then <laughs> and it starts off. <laughs> oh, and you give people the wrong li- karaoke oh, lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. Like no, they, that would be fucking awesome. That's fine. <laughs> the beginning of each like stanza is the. Um, uh, uh, or each phrase is the actual song and then it goes into AI <laughs> and you have to yeah. straight sell it the whole time. Uh, here, I'm going to get a drink very <laughs> quickly. Star Wars opening right. crawl. I don't know that you can get more AI than the dead speak. Emperor <laughs> Palpatine's got a podcast and he's at uh, oh. another place and and Ben Solo's <laughs> such a fan, man. He's going to go find him no matter what. <laughs> oh, like, man. Fucking Kylo Ren's like, your podcast is lit, fam. I'm glad I found you on Swamp World. <laughs> oh, you realize that within a year or two, we'll be making a game of feeding it a night attack bit. And then <laughs> and then us doing a script of the two of us <laughs> just <laughs> acting like we're doing okay, night attack. In a year or two, you yeah, we, by the end of this episode. <laughs> I'm the kind of rapper who laughs while he smokes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, maybe what if just 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 very quickly, I know we have a show to do, but what if? <laughs> Brian, hey boss, Justin, sup bro What's up bro, we got some bad news Kevin is under siege by an army of mice And it's looking bad Steve, <laughs> yeah the sad thing is I have to come down and help I have to, Steve Listen Steve, listen Steve I don't know Steve There is only one way to save Kevin I have to go in, please God stay with us Steve We have to take down the fire first Okay, I'm on it Make it Jeff, Jeff Fakes blood curling scream. God, I'll never get over this. Burn. That was. <laughs> All right. I, I, I'm going to get bird. on the phone with my fucking agent immediately and yeah, talk about dude. this script rewrite this where script all of a sudden just bullshit. Brian's written out. <laughs> yeah. I'm seeing a lot of Jeff. I'm seeing a lot of Fern. I'm seeing a whole lot of Steve. I don't oh, see this? shit for Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Fern. <laughs> Just Fern shows up. I'm telling you what, though. By the way, market research is over the moon for Fern. They cannot get enough Fern. This is this is how you get coupon the movie. The market re- <laughs> the market just demands it, and then you have to sue the public for not watching it. Oh. Okay. Oh God. Good stuff. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Fern, am I right? All right, that's the name of this banked episode. I hope you enjoyed it. We don't know when it'll show up. We hope yeah. you find it remotely as funny as we did. Right. Oh. Uh, Justin, do you need a break or are you ready to go? Oh, fuck it. Let's go. All right, here we go then. Let me click a few more buttons and I'll just start the thing. <laughs> we never got to play uh, ICUs previously on. Oh, no, but I did retweet it. Everybody go check that out. At Night Attack. Oh, thank or, you for doing that. That was very, very funny. At ICU on Twitter. All right. Uh, oh, let me make sure I got this the right thing. Uh, Vicario, Vicario, bump, bump. Yeah, that'll be where we're at. All right. Here we go. <laughs>